Today is uh, Friday, May 10th, 2019. Want to bend some metal. How do you bend metal? Well, this is quarter inch thick material and I want to finish with three inches outside on this leg. So, what you do, metal always stretches when you bend it. It stretches on the outside. So, if I want three inches outside, it's quarter inch material, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my metal and I'm going to mark it at two and three quarters of an inch, use a scribe, and I'm going to mark a line at two and three quarters. And that line is going to be my actual bend line. When it bends, it's going to stretch and it's going to create a three inch leg here. Now I'm going to take just the help, I'm going to use a center punch and mark a couple dots on here. That's going to help me identify where I want to hit it on the press brake. Now on press brakes, we've got our piece, there is the press brake itself, now this is a Cincinnati CB210, 10, 10 foot, 90 tons, you can actually do up to 12 feet in there. There's on this machine, this is called a crownable filler block, and at the end there's a hand crank, and you actually, there's shims, there's brass shims within there, and you hand crank and give it a certain number of thousands of, of arch because the middle needs a little more tonnage um, and a little more, a little bit deeper of a, a depth for the bend for it to come back properly. When you're bending things like stainless steel, you'll have a lot of spring back as well. Then, in the press brake, you have to choose your dies. Now, choosing dies, if your metal thickness is quarter inch, you want to go eight times your metal thickness. So, quarter inch, we want a two inch V die, and the two inch is measured across the top inside that V. This is for air bending. Now there's also another process of coining. Now in coining, think of a coin, it actually is coming and conforming to the full uh, the full die. This is three point air bending. It requires the least tonnage. Now if you've got an issue and you're trying to bend something and you don't have enough tonnage on the machine, then you can cheat a little bit. When I say cheat, you can use a bigger V. If we put a quarter inch, for example, quarter inch. For each foot of material that you get a bend, it's 15.3 tons per foot. Well, if we're going to do 10 feet long, you need 153 tons. This machine's only 90. If you use a four inch V die, which I'll show you in a minute, then you would use, it only takes five or 6.3 tons per foot. So you only need 63 tons. So ultimately on die selection, Typically, for a full setup, if you're doing all kinds of stuff, you're going to spend as much in dies and tooling as you are on the machine. There's all kinds of different things, like these called gooseneck dies, where you come in and where you're trying to do different bends, um, where you're going to be bending like channels and you need part of it to fit up inside there. These are flattening dies that you can come in and, and if you've got a, a, a bend that you need to change, or you know it's bent wrong or sometimes if you're bending a channel and the legs are really deep you have to do what they call back bending but there's all kinds of different selections based on you know especially your V dies because if you're doing thinner metals remember that eight times your metal thickness all the way up to this we have the biggest is a four inch and you can bend all kinds of things and if you do step bending which you would do a bend every set, every like quarter or three eighths of an inch, and you can get it to conform to actually almost a uh, a radius. One thing to consider is each of these tools are very specific. They will tell you right here. There's a chart, and if we look at this one here, for example, this one, the maximum load is. 50 tons per foot. This weighs, is that 16 pounds per foot? 13, I think. 13. So you know how much weight you're grabbing. On particular gooseneck dies, they'll tell you, you got to be real careful. If you take a really thin, small gooseneck and give it too much tonnage, you'll damage tooling. Also, uh, Here's a couple more examples of some parts, you know, where you go in and actually it looks like it's got a nice radius, like it was rolled, but it's actually been hit with several different bends 
to get that shape. You can also do tapers. You change and set a taper on it. So let's go over and You have to be real careful on when you put your die in. The maximum load on this here, you can see an indentation here where there was a short die in here and it actually damaged the bed and dug a die in there. You have to, the maximum load on this machine, it varies from machine to machine. This is a hydraulic press. 15 tons per square inch of surface. So you have to calculate how much surface you've actually got against your top and your bottom so you don't damage it. So, we've got this set up, we chose a 2 inch V die, we put this in here, and we're going to look for them dots, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Now I'm in setup mode, and I'm going to bring it down and touch those dots. We're just looking for those dots to get right at that spot. Bring it down, and just touch the material. So we're in our clamp position now on the computer. I'm not going to get too much. I'm going to go through this really fast. But I'm going to enter a new program. Enter new program, yes. I'm not going to give it a part number. Just hit enter. Angle mode, I do want angle mode because it will calculate for me if, I, if it bends at 5 degrees under, I can tell it that and it will automatically calculate where to change the top to. So my material thickness is quarter inch, 0.25, enter. The V opening is two inches, two point, enter. Lower die angle, it's 85 degrees as our standard dies, enter. Now my top of material, because I just clamped onto the top, so I'm gonna hit transfer, enter. Now it's already calculated for me, the mute position is related to these light curtains. The light curtains prevent the machine from moving outside of the parameters so that you don't get more than a quarter inch of a pinch point. OSHA says you have to have maximum quarter inch above the top of your material without using the light curtains. Provided you set it at a quarter inch and you can program it and leave these out of the way because it's never going more than a quarter inch, you're fine. So it's already calculated that for us. Enter. Then we're going to go into the program data. Now the program data the highlighted one, the top stop. We're going to hit transfer. Let me go back to job data. We want our top stop just above or just below the mute position. So 10 point, we'll go 4 5. The desired angle is 90 degrees. Enter. Speed change, leave it go. The actual angle, that's where if it comes up a little bit under, we're going to tell it the actual, what it actually is, and it'll correct it for us. we hit enter. Now, if we wanted to do a tapered part, we would give it ram tilt. We can do positive or negative and change either side. Enter, because we don't want any tilt. Now, tonnage. For what we're bending, we're only going to give it, we're just going to give it 10 tons. We don't need to tell it 90. 10, enter. Now, end program, we're going to go in here, we want the foot switch on, and we've got to go in for the operator station, as far as the right or the left, the stroke stops off, form speed, leave it on medium, we're in setup, so we're going to go to single stroke, then we can do the foot switches on, and the operator station's off, this is the operator station. And you can use either one. This has your ease stop, and then you can use these as a ram up or down. Ram up, and then these come down. You have to hit both of them. That's another safety factor in your setup and process. So we should be good to go. Now, I'm going to hit ram up a little bit. I'm going to pull the piece out and let it do a one cycle through slowly and watch what it does. Checking for clearances and making sure we don't have anything in the way. It doesn't come down too fast. I didn't have a wrong number and it comes too far. So I'm going to reset this up. This is an issue with the uh, top stop.
with that light curtain and top stop, it prevents you from, uh, which is a good thing. So now we go back in here. The light curtain prevents you from, until we get it in the right spot. There we go. Try that. Okay. and I can see that it's about oh it's about four degrees under so this operates off flat being 180 degrees so if I wanted it to 90 because it bent a little bit under it bent it to 94 degrees so I'm going to tell it 94 and roll auto correct That's some basics with the press brake. The light curtain and the programming of the quarter inch is a little bit fussy. Um, it's there for a reason. What reason I don't necessarily know because the smartest thing you can do is just be aware. Don't stick your fingers in. And that takes care of it. But anyway, so there we are. Thanks for watching.